Church on Sunday when security forces in DRC cracked down on church-led demonstrations. Uh, this was, you know, organized by Catholic and evangelical churchgoers across Congo. Now, um, we know that they were met with police and soldiers who were deployed to stop them. Tell us a little bit about this incident. You knew the family of the dead protester who you also have told me is a university lecturer. Tell us about the circumstances that led to this untimely death. Yes, uh, Rossi uh, Chimanga uh, Mukendi, uh, unfortunately, uh, was killed by security forces in the DRC. Uh, he was at a church on Sunday as a church uh, Catholic lay leaders have called for protests across the country. They have asked people to uh, join the church service and right after the church service come out in the street to call for the Congolese government, specifically for Kabila to respect the Congolese constitution and uh, organize election timely. So he participated in the church service on Sunday and uh, right after church service, uh, security forces um, attacked the church goers while they were still within the, the church enclosure. As he was trying to protect uh, the church goers by closing the gate, he was uh, shot uh, by uh, an officer. Uh, we getting reports that now the name of the officer is known. Uh, still, investigation is ongoing. Now, unfortunately, uh, Rossi Mukendimuchi uh, Chimanga uh, died uh, from uh, the wounds uh, that he actually had uh, after he was shot by the police officers. But his story is not unique. Uh, many young Congolese have uh, been killed. Uh, in the DRC as they try to express their constitutional right by holding their government accountable for not organizing elections and calling for uh, Joseph Kabila to respect the Constitution. What does that actually mean? He's had two presidential terms. The Congolese Constitution says that he can only be there for two terms, mm -hmm. but he has overstayed his power and he's not organizing election at, at this time. The head of the UN mission uh, in Congo, Leila Zerugui, has called on Congolese authorities to carry out credible investigations into these incidents and impose appropriate sanctions. Is that likely to happen, Kambale? It, it is difficult to tell. I mean, the uh, track record of the Congolese government is that they have not investigated fully many of the killings that's taking place in the Congo, uh, sometimes by Congolese security forces. Uh, you may know that in the center of the Congo, in the Kasei region, uh, over 100 mass graves were found uh, in the DRC, and the been allegation of Congolese security forces uh, having participated in the killing of the civilians there. Two UN uh, experts uh, who went to investigate uh, there, uh, an American and a Swedish, uh, Michael Sharp and Zaida Catalan, were killed during the investigation. Um, so we still don't have the truth about what is happening. Mm -hmm. But what is important to know, even though we may not get justice uh, from uh, on the ground, uh, it is vital that Africans throughout, throughout the African country that denounce what is actually happening. We see Botswana, as of yesterday, issue a statement mm -hmm. uh, calling for Kabila to step down. Uh, the National Union of Veteran Workers of South Africa, NUMSA, have called on Joseph Kabila to step down. And we want more uh, Africans, faith leaders, head of state, civil society, uh, the African Union, anyone with a moral fiber uh, in the body needs to decry what is unfolding in the DRC in the heart of the African continent. T tell us a little bit more about the influence of the church in the Democratic Republic of Congo. We can see that the protesters largely are from the Catholic and Evangelical Church. What sort of power does the church possess in DRC on the political realm? So there are two major forces that have credibility in the DRC. One of them is the Congolese youth and the other is uh, church leaders. Uh, specifically around the protests that start happening right now, uh, is the Catholic lay leaders, not necessarily the priests, right? There is a group of churchgoers, uh, Catholic, who for the past year have been organizing across the country. And uh, over that time, uh, they, their hope has been to put pressure on the Congolese government in a peaceful manner mm -hmm. uh, to actually abide by the Congolese constitution. The Catholic Church is the most organized institution within the, the country, mm -hmm. and because of... Uh, their organizational structure, uh, the message of the lay leaders is able to, uh, to reach many, many Congolese across the country. And the people of the Congo, uh, the youth and the, the ordinary people, have listened to that call uh, to join protests every, uh, on Sunday whenever there is a call for the protest, but it's a peaceful protest. Join the march calling for very simple uh, basic things. One, for the president of the Congo to respect the cons Congolese constitution, for political uh, political prisoners to be released, you know, mm -hmm. some of them are again uh, young Congolese like Christian Lumo who has been in jail since November, but 
the, the call is so noble, and that, that is a, a really uh, the moral voice of the ERC that we hope people around the world uh, will join in solidarity with Congolese by you know, demanding that the Kabila regime respect human life. I mean, we have too many lives that mm -hmm. have been lost in the ERC, uh, and we do not need any more young Congolese to actually die or you know, any organized in the Congo to die for calling for something that's so basic as okay. respecting the Congolese constitution. Okay, Kambale, my last, my last question is a two-in-one. We hear reports that on the days of these protests, uh, residents are not able to access the internet, mobile data, and phone messaging. Can you confirm that? And finally, what next? What next for the protesters? What next for the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo? It is so unfortunate that the Congolese government has used the tactic of turning off the internet, uh, turning off SMS uh, during protests. Anytime there have been major protests since to, uh, probably 2011, uh, this has been a tactic of the Congolese government. What do they do so? Uh, by cutting off the internet, it does not allow for the organizer on the ground to share information about what is happening. For example, the pictures or the videos of the assault that's taking place. Uh, as of now, the internet has been restored, and since the internet has been restored in the DRC, we are seeing gruesome videos and pictures about what has uh, happened to the Congolese people. But what is next for the DRC? Uh, for the DRC, at least for what the people want, is that for Kabila to step down. There have been propositions by international actors that the Kabila should remain in power until the election takes place. That is not the reality that the Congolese people are asking for. The Congolese people are asking for a transition without Kabila in power. With him in power, we, it is likely to see more crisis taking place. Uh, and the reason also why we believe, even with him in power, that we will not have an election is the track record. Uh, for the past seven years, he has not organized election. Mm -hmm. There is no guarantee for the next uh, year or so that there will be an election. Okay. The Congolese people want a new leadership, a okay. leadership that comes from the people, not imposed by the West, as has been the case for uh, Kabila. And the, lay, the Catholic lay leaders are calling for more march to uh, take place and are also calling for people around the world to join that call on putting pressure on the Kabila regime uh, to respect human life, to respect the Congolese constitution, to step down and allow Congolese to have a leader that represents their they will. Thank, thank you so much. I think you've put that very well into perspective for our Kenyan and East African audience. That is Kambale Musavuli. He's a spokesperson, Friends of the Congo, uh, based in Johannesburg at the moment. Thank you for taking time to let us know a little bit about what is happening in the Democratic Republic of Congo.